I'm Andrew Morgan and I'm very quickly going to step you through the MySQL replication utilities that come with MySQL Workbench. In this demo I'm going to quickly cover a number of topics. The first one is actually how to run the utilities themselves. Once you've done that, setting up the replication topology. Setting up MySQL utilities to monitor the state of the cluster and in particular the state of the master. Kill one of the servers and observe that there's an automatic failover of a one of the existing slaves to be a new master, then returning the failed server to the cluster, and finally re-promoting that slave to be the master of the cluster again. So this is the topology we start with, where we've got five independent MySQL servers split across two different hosts. The initial cluster topology is to make the server running on utils1 with port 3306 be the master and the rest be slaves hanging off that master, receiving replication events. We then kill the master MySQL server and observe that one of the slaves is promoted to be the new master. We then return the failed MySQL server to, uh, into service and add it back into the cluster, initially as a slave, but then we re-promote it to be the master. So from within Workbench, launch utilities just by clicking on the pocket knife button in the top right hand corner of the window. And that fires up the command line that we're going to be using. Before we actually set up the replication, we need to create the replication users on each of the MySQL servers that we're going to use. And those five servers are split across two hosts, one called utils1 and one called utils2. And as usual, we're going to use different port numbers to identify the different MySQL servers on the same hosts. So that's what we're doing here. Once we've completed this, we can actually go back to the Utilities window. And from there, we're going to use the MySQL replicate command. And we're going to specify the master and the user to use on the master, and also the slave that we want to add. So here we're adding the two, My two MySQL servers both running on utils1 and that's all there is to it. That replication relationship is now set up so we now do it for the other slaves and so this is going to be three different slaves all running on the utils2 host. So we just step through each of those in turn. Okay, On the right hand side you can see that the bin log uh, commands have been run and we're actually seeing some output there. We can now use the REPL show command to confirm that the uh, cluster topology has been set up and also the MySQL REPL check to make sure that the replication is up and running correctly. We now run the MySQL failover command and we use this to basically just monitor the status of the master and we've told it that if the master should fail then it should promote another slave. So what we're going to do here now is we're just going to go and kill one of kill the master server. So we use the MySQL admin command to do that. Okay, now let's go back to the failover utility. And as you can see the master is still showing as being up and running, but the utility should very quickly identify that it has failed and then promote the next available slave. And so it's now detected. It's letting that master cat the new master catch up and then promoting it to master. And as you can see, utils1 port 3307 has now taken over as the master. Okay, we'll now go back and we'll restart the old master. So obviously it's no longer the master, uh, but we can now add it as a slave to the cluster. So the old master added back into the cluster, but now it's just going to be a slave. So let's run MySQL failover again to start the, the monitoring. This time we need to point it to the new master. And there we are, 3307 is running as the master and 3306 as a new slave. The final thing we're going to do is just re-promote 3306 to be the master. And we use the MySQL REPL admin command to do that. And now we've done that, so the old master is now the master again, and we can run the failover uh, command just to continue the monitoring, switching back to the old master. It fails the first time, that's because we didn't shut down cleanly when we killed the master, so we just used the force command, and now we're in. 
I know I've gone through that extremely quickly. If you want to take a more leisurely pace and in particular cut and paste the commands to try for yourself, then this is the URL to go to for a blog that steps through everything. clusterdb.com slash u slash util. Thanks for your time.